In this last presentation, we're going to again review five steps for hypothesis testing. In step one, we state the null and alternative hypothesis while identifying the claim. In step two, we determine the level of significance alpha, we draw the picture, and we also determine critical values. In step three, we compute the test statistic. After we compute the test statistics, we compute the p-value. In step four, we're going to compare the test statistics with the critical value or as an alternative method, we're going to use the p-value method to compare the p-value to alpha. And in step five, we're going to make a statement. We're going to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis and make a concluding statement about the problem at hand and support or deny any claim that we make. So in this particular session, we're going to focus on step five. In step five, our focus is going to be on the null hypothesis. Either we're going to reject or we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. In this case, we do not say we are going to accept the null hypothesis. We simply say we're going to reject the null hypothesis because the term accept is too strong of a term because we're basing our decision on samples. So in step four, we determine if the null hypothesis is rejected or if it's failed to be rejected. In step five, which is the most important step, the conclusions are drawn based on the problem at hand. If our claim is in the null hypothesis and we reject the null hypothesis, then the claim is false. If our claim is in the null hypothesis and we fail to reject the null hypothesis, in other words, we don't throw it out, then our claim is true. On the other hand, if our claim is in the alternative hypothesis and we reject the null hypothesis, then our claim is true. If our claim is in the alternative hypothesis and we fail to reject the null hypothesis, then our claim is false. Here's the information that we're going to be using to make our final decisions about the outcome of our hypothesis testing.